Good morning, good morning, good morning. Pray you guys received sweet sleep last night. Woke up with bells and whistles on, ready to take on this new day, a day that we have never seen before and a day that we'll never see again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey there, Heartbeat Troy, Heartbeat Eva. Hey there, Heartbeat Nicole. Hey there, Heartbeat Sherry. Hey, Heartbeat Bernice, Heartbeat Alice. Heartbeats on Instagram, Heartbeats on YouTube. Good morning, good morning. Good morning to you guys and welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, aka I'm the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation of what we've been talking about this week, and it is the Divine Artistry of God Part 3. The Divine Artistry of God Part 3. Hey there, Heartbeat Juanita, Heartbeat Sabrina, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Tanya, good morning to you. And so today, as we still journey on with Christ in this uh, in Holy Week, Today, Holy Wednesday, known by the Roman Catholic Church. Hey, Heartbeat Ilea, Heartbeat Yolanda. Um, known uh Holy Wednesday, known by the Catholic Roman Catholic Church as Spy Wednesday. And this is the day, if we're following, you know, the word of God, this is the day that Judas makes a conscious decision to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And so Again, with our series being the divine artistry of God, we see that this was all a part of God's plan. You know, sometime in life we encounter a Judas, right? Someone who betrays us, but it works out in the end because Judas never wins. We know that on Sunday we will celebrate the resurrection of Christ. So Although Judas did what he did, Judas never wins. And so if that's you, you know, you've been betrayed by Judas, know that Judas never wins. Amen. And so let's get into what we're doing today, the divine honesty of God, part three. Um, and today's uh, pericope of scripture will come from uh, Jeremiah chapter one, verses five through eight. And to me really shows the divine artistry of God, not that the other scriptures that we've gone over doesn't, but this is a good one. And I'm going to be reading it in the um, voice translation. It says this, and now the faithful day when the eternal one first spoke to me before I even formed you in your mother's womb. Here we go. The divine artistry of God. Before I even formed you in your mother's womb, I knew all about you. Before you drew your first breath, I had already chosen you to be my prophet, to speak my word to the nations. And I want that to sink in with you on this morning, that before you were even in your mother's womb, he said this, I already knew you. Before you took your first breath, I already had chosen you to be one that I'm going to use to get the glory out of your life. And so know this, that no matter what has gone on in your life, Life, you have been chosen. You know, if you hang out with me on Sunday mornings, you know Ephesians 1. That's one of the um, chapters that we have been dealing with all year because it reminds us that we are chosen by God, that we are blameless, that we, you know, um, are uh a child of God, that we uh, had this righteousness, you know, that there, that we are wrapped in the love of Jesus. And so you have been chosen. Don't let the circumstance, don't let the situation that you may be facing today change your mind on who you are. Don't let it make you doubt that you have been chosen. You have been chosen. So Jeremiah starts, um, making excuses. You know, he says, I'm too young. You know, I'm an inexperienced speaker. How many times have we done that? God has called us to do a great thing in the kingdom of God. And we start looking at our own qualifications. We start looking at our own resume. We start saying, oh no, I don't think that I can do that. Well, listen, you're in the same seat that Jeremiah was, but God responds like this. He tells him, listen, don't use your youth as an excuse. So I'm saying, 
saying to you, don't use your youth, don't use your age, don't use what you can or what you can't do. You can do what God called you to do. God tells Jeremiah, he says, you can and you will go everywhere I send you. You can and you will say everything that I instruct you to say. And so know this, that anytime that God calls you, you're never doing it in your own strength. You're doing it in the strength of God. Remember, you've been chosen. No one else can do this assignment because you've been chosen. When we get to verse 80, he says this, you have no reason to fear the people for whom you'll be speaking to, for I am with you and I will defend you. So you don't ever have to worry about the people that you have to encounter on this journey on whatever it is that God has called you to do. He says, listen, I'm going to be with you. He says, and I'm going to defend you. Get this meaning this. You don't ever have to defend yourself. I'm going to say that again. You don't ever have to defend yourself learn to be quiet you know whatever they're saying let them say it let them have their few moments of glory because God is going to defend you in the end I started off talking about Judas this morning that Judas does not have the last word and so if someone has betrayed you if someone is talking a different story than you don't worry about it you just keep moving ahead and what God has called you to do because God says listen you don't have to do that. You don't have to defend yourself. I got you. I got your back and I will defend you. We move moving on in um, this pericope. Um, Jeremiah then says that the eternal one has now touched him. God says this. He says, I have placed my words in you. You are my vo voice. You'll know what to say. And so you've been touched by God. We can pick up so much in this pericope of scripture. You've been touched by God. He has laid his hands on you. You have got the green light from heaven to go and do what it is that God has called you to do. He said, I place my word in you. It's in there. You think that, you know, I'm not one that talks great in front of a group of people. God says, listen, girl, listen, man, it's on the inside of you. He says, listen, get rid of the fear because fear doesn't live here. He says, get rid of the fear because I I didn't give it to you. I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of love, and power, and of a sound mind. He says, I didn't give you that shape. Push that back across the table to the enemy. I didn't give you that. There is no need to fear. Everything that you need is already there. I've already put it on the inside of you. I've already chosen you to do this first and foremost. So there's nothing anybody can do about it. You've been chosen by me. So no need to be afraid. No need to go through all of the list of the things or why you can't do it. Get rid of the excuses because you're going to do what I called you to do. You're going to say what I called you to say. You don't have to fear because I'm with you. You don't have to worry about them coming up against you because I'm going to defend you. It's kind of like this. He's removed everything that you could be concerned about. Don't be afraid. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are. It doesn't matter whether or not you have the experience. I called you to do this. You were chosen before you were in your mother's womb. Um, you're pretty much going to do what I said you're going to do. You're going to say what I said you're going to say. There's not going to be any fear there. Then I'm going to put my hand over your mouth. I'm going to put the word inside of you and you'll do it. Sounds real easy, right? Getting it back to the pericope in verse, um, I'm in verse 10 now. And it says, this very day I appointed you to speak with my authority over nations and kingdoms. So now he, we're adding on. He says this. Let's, let's just walk back through this again. He knocked out all of the excuses. He says, say what I tell you to say. Go where I tell you to go. Um, don't be afraid. There's no reason for that. Then he says, I place my word in you by giving you that touch. Then he says this. I've appointed you and I've given you authority. Are you seeing the divine? divine artistry of God. Have, can you see it in your own life? He says, I've given you, I've appointed you, which means I've chosen you. He said, to speak with my authority. So you have the backing of heaven with you over nations and kingdoms. He says this, your word will be my word and it will have power to uproot, to stamp out, it would destroy, it would bring it to an end. But then get this, it's so powerful, it then will come back 
and rebuild and plant anew. This sounds like the New Testament of binding and loosen to me. And so although we see it over in the um, Old Testament, it's fulfilled in the new. Um, understand this, anything that God has made it, anything that has made it to you, that God has allowed to happen to you, it's already gone by him. I'm gonna say it again. Anything that has made its way to you, it had to be stamped by God. It had to go through him. Know that you're going to make it. I know none of us are like Job. We didn't sign up for this. You know, we'll even tell God, listen, I'm not signing up to be tested this year. You know, just let me live my life. But you've been chosen because everything that you go through, everything that you will ever go through, listen, it's orchestrated by God. It does not matter. You will make it. You will see your divine destiny. It had to happen. It had to happen that it will strengthen you, that it will get you closer to God. So again, switch your brain on how you see things. Know that this is your year of your divine destiny, that you will be the person that God called you to be. Allow God to change you. Allow God to rearrange you. Allow God to mold you into the image that he has for you. Allow God to use you mightily. He said it like this, before you were even in your mother's womb, before you took your first breath, I had already chosen you for such a time as this. Harvey Nation, you can do it. Why? Because you have all of heaven backing you and God is your defender. Amen. Hey, listen, that's the daily dosage for today. The Divine Artistry of God Part 3. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so. There you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms, God Wants Me Whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God Wants Me Whole. And I am, again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, a.k.a. I'm the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there, have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And if you are available tonight, join us as we walk in wholeness Wednesday at 7 p.m. Need the Zoom link? Uh, email info at godwantsmehold.org and we'll get that right out to you. Again, make a spec while amazing. Look out for the falling blessings because they are truly falling all around you. You are so welcome, Heartbeat Eva. It is truly, truly, truly my pleasure to serve you all. Praise Jesus that you receive it and that you believe the dosage is awesome. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow as we continue on in the divine artistry of God.